What is up Flutter devs? Today we're going to implement the ability to draw lines in our port of processing to Flutter. Let's jump into it. Here we have the usual processing specification and we have a few examples of drawing lines using a procedure in processing. Here we have a single line being drawn in the first example, three lines being drawn in the second example, one of which has a different color than the first two, and then there is a 3D version. We're a long way off from worrying about our implementing 3D, so we are simply going to ignore this 3D test. We're not going to implement that test ourselves for now. Let's read the description for this procedure to make sure we understand what we're doing. Draws a line, a direct path between two points to the screen. The version of line with four parameters draws the line in 2D. To color a line, use the stroke function. A line cannot be filled, therefore the fill function will not affect the color of the line. 2D lines are drawn with a width of one pixel by default, but this can be changed with the stroke weight function. The version with six parameters allows the line to be placed anywhere within XYZ space. Drawing this shape in 3D with the Z parameter requires the P3D parameter in combination with size as shown in the above example. We will offer the optional parameter for a third optional yes parameter for a third point but we're going to throw an exception if anybody tries to provide one for now because we're not going to implement it looking down here at the parameters uh, they are all obvious i can't remember if we've implemented stroke weight join or cap yet but those all really those things operate on the stroke paint we just need to use the stroke paint so if we haven't implemented these, uh, these methods yet in our sketch object, our sketch class, whenever we do, it should just work. We're not going to worry about them for now because the two examples that we are going to replicate, neither of these make use of stroke weight or the cap or the join. Once again, as always, our process here is to define the test that we want to run and then implement the code that makes the test work. These are the two cases that we want to test. Let's go set up the tests. Coming back to our test suite that has all the other 2D primitives, we see where we left off last time with the quad test. We're going to copy that test. And this time there are two tests, two tests for, for the line procedure and processing or method as we're going to implement it. We will have line example one line, line, and a line is described by the a starting point and an ending point. Again, the implementation, we will allow for an optional third parameter, but we don't need to test that for now. And in the implementation, we're going to throw an exception if anybody tries to use it. Let's take this test and copy it one more time to create space for the second test. This is example two. Example two. Back up in example one. Let's copy these points over. The first point or starting point should be 30, comma, 20, ending at 85, comma, 75. That's the test that we want to compile and run first. And then the second test case is going to be this one here with three lines and two colors. Let's copy all that over. The first line that we want to draw is 30 comma 20, then 85 comma 20. Then we want to say S dot stroke, which takes a color and we will say color from ARGB, which allows us to pass in values between zero and 255, which allows us to exactly match the 126 gray in the test case. Notice that we are calling multiple methods on the incoming sketch. What we can do instead of repeating this S over and over again is we can use the cascade operator such that at some, at some point this will auto format for us. Um, but this allows us to invoke multiple calls on the same sketch object in a row thereby avoiding the repetition of the s dot s dot s dot s dot. After we set the color to 126 gray, 
we then draw another line. This one is 85, 20, excuse me, 30, I'm sorry, yeah, 85, 20 to 85, 75. After this call to line, we then want to adjust the stroke color again, this time to white. Um, we could say colors.white. I guess since we already used from ARGB, I'll use it again. 255, 255, 255, 255. And we will have a final call to line where we start at 85, 75, and we go to 30, 75. I'll now delete that reference, save, auto format, great. We take our one sketch object and we invoke all of these things in a row. First line, change the color. Second line, change the color. Third line. We want both this test and the previous test to compile and then give us these two images here that we see in the specification. Let's go implement it. Here we have quad, we have triangle. A triangle has fewer points than a quad. Then we have rect and square and circle. In my mind, line is one of the simplest things we can draw and therefore I'd like for it to be closer to the top. So I will copy triangle, come up here to the top and paste that method here and rename it to line. And a line is kind of like a triangle minus a point. So we'll remove that point. In this case, we don't need a path object because draw line is defined on canvas itself. We also don't need to worry about the fill paint because there is no fill on a line. Instead of draw path, we will say draw line. We will pass in P1, P2, and stroke paint. Let's save that. I mentioned the optional parameter for 3D. Let's include that while we're here. It's optional. We, that's designated by these square brackets. But we will say if P3 is not null, we are going to throw an unimplemented error. 3D line drawing is not yet supported. By adding this parameter now, we kind of ensure that there's always space for it, but we are going to make it clear to anybody who tries to use it that it doesn't actually do anything. Let's save that. Let's go back to the test. All right, the red squiggly is gone there, so it compiles, and the red squigglies are gone here, so the second test compiles. Let's run both of these. Open the terminal, flutter, test, update goldens, plain name, equals line. Let's run it. All test pass, go to goldens. Here's the first line, which is roughly the same as this one. Now, as has been the case previously, it looks like whatever the anti-aliasing behavior is, is cl clearly not the same. This line looks, I mean, it's, it's pure staircasing. Uh, so it's, it looks thinner and jaggedy as compared to this line. There may, there could be something related to canvas or some other part of Flutter where we could alter that behavior. But really, I'm just worried about getting the logical operations down. I don't think we need to go deep into that right now. Eventually, it might be more of a concern and we can figure it out. In terms of where this line starts and ends, it looks to be the correct start and the correct end, and it is in black, which is expected, and it's one pixel wide, which is expected. So I'm fine with that. Let's look at the second one. Here's the second one, which we're comparing to this second image over here. Once again, looks a little different, maybe at the corners. It's also kind of weird because we're scaling it. That's the actual size of it. Uh, but once again, we, it looks like we're starting and ending each line segment where we expect to start and end it. The colors are being respected. So I think we have a legitimate implementation of line. Again, the 3D stuff will come sometime uh, in the future when we're ready to deal with such things. 
We now have line implemented. I think in the next video, we will probably implement the point method, and I will see you then.